Oh, I guess they went off. I guess they didn't want to go live. I don't know. I sometimes I be pushing the wrong button. Sometimes I don't know. What's going on here? All right, I gotta get I gotta get my little power station together. So um, yeah. Y'all think it's easy doing what I'm doing? Like it's not easy. It's not easy being an instrument of change. See. I spend about, I don't know, an hour a day blocking, reporting accounts now because clearly I have to do I got to get a whole social media team to do this because I don't know how people like Talib have time to sit around and create fake ghost pages just to antagonize people because they don't want anyone to see them doing it. See, that's why I don't do that. I want people to know that I'm talking about them. I want people to hear me saying it. I want people to hear me doing it. I don't want anyone to be confused at the fact that I am not afraid to say whatever I got to say to whoever I got to say it to, and if they got a problem with it, they can come say it to my face. I'm loud, I'm obnoxious, I'm this, I'm that. There's a lot of loud and obnoxious people. Rodney Dangerfield was loud and obnoxious, and he was a millionaire and a very successful comedian. Um, <clears throat> who else? See, if I were a comedian, everything that I'm doing and saying would be okay, but who's to say that I'm not the comedian? Who's to say that I'm not a great comedic writer? Like I said, half of the things that I'm saying about some of these A-listers, if 50 Cent was saying them, nobody would have a problem with it. 50 say whatever he want to say. Curtis, Curtis say whatever he wants to say. And everybody true. Why? Because he took some bullets. And he's tough. Guess what? I took a bullet too. And so what? Like 50 Cent, the only nigga that been shot. Like... So you got to be shot to, to pop fly? Do I got to show y'all all my scars and all my bruises from every time I was cut and stabbed so it can be okay for me to be myself? But what I'm not going to tolerate is black people treating other black people unfairly with disrespecting them because the truth is we can't expect anything from white America until we're willing to do it amongst ourselves. How are we ever going to expect white America to respect us when we don't respect ourselves? The reason why I filmed that entire exchange is because the entire time that I was there, while the storm interviews were getting views and all of that, and I was talking actively about Mary J. Blige, that chick had an attitude with me from day one. I got to walk through the, uh, the halls of the uh, hotel looking for a cart because... Nobody bothered to put things back, but then when I come down and I speak to the Mexican woman and she comes out of the office and there's a cloud of smoke coming behind her and it smells like meth or crack or something, and she was back there getting high and I was waiting at the front desk at 3 a.m. in the morning for what, 10 minutes before she finally came out? And that was after I rang the phone at the front desk, standing at the front desk for about, yeah, 8 to 10 minutes, and then told me she couldn't leave. She couldn't get the card. She couldn't find the card. I had to wander through the hotel at night, a woman by myself. Anybody could be in that elevator at night. If you don't want to have to go looking for things in the middle of the night, why don't you do your job and make sure that the carts was in the place they needed to be for the people that were checking in very late, like my husband and myself? See, we've gotten so used to incompetence in the African-American, and just people of color, period. We've gotten so used to being incompetent with one another that we constantly just expect people to let us make it. See, everybody's so busy minding their business that ain't nobody talking the truth. Truth is, a lot of these extended stays in Dallas, there's a lot of drug addicts and prostitutes that hang out at these places. Now, see, me, I like to stay in certain places because I don't eat at every restaurant. My husband and I have a very strict diet. We cook every day. So I need to be in a place with a kitchen. My husband's also military. So we stay in places that honor veterans. Extended stay is one of them. I can go to the market, pick up the food. You know, we unpack the stuff. Everything is good. Like, it's simple. And it's easier for us to police our own personal security. Because we secure ourselves. 
My husband isn't just my husband. He's also my security agent. And I am trained as well. So we like to stay in places where we actually have a say and who can run up on us or who can't run up on us. Now, all that being said, if I come to an establishment looking for refuge while I'm waiting for my new home to be ready and I'm spending all of this money, why can't I go down into the lobby and get the cart to go out to my car and get my things so I can be able to cook breakfast when I wake up in the morning for my husband like I do every day? That's what I'm paying for. Well, I don't have the right to ask for that. I don't have the right to ask that people that are supposed to be being paid to do a job do their job, but I'm for my car is getting banged up. The reason why I turned the camera on when I did was because I had my earbuds in when I walked in, and she I thought I heard her say, are you guys checking out tonight? And I said, well, you know, we're not sure when we're going to be getting the keys for our new place, you know, so I'll let you know, you know, before checkout time. She said, oh, no, you checking out. And that's when I was like, oh, wait a minute, did she just pop fly? So I took my earbuds out, and I said, I'm sorry, do we have a problem? Yeah, you checking out tonight. You you think you special? You talking shit about Mary J. Blige? You checking out tonight? Oh, yeah, she got real. Sitcom's got real, um, uh, she got real serious about Mary J. Blige. And I said, well, bitch, I got a Mary J. Blige song for you. I'm not going to cry because you need to be singing that song after I get your ass fired. But don't be mad because UPS is hiring, ho. Your job isn't to worry about Mary J. Blige's reputation. It's to worry about the guests who are paying money to stay there so you can have a job during the COVID. Like I told her in the rest of the video, which I might post later. I hope you got a, I hope you got something else lined up. Because this is a big mistake that you're making. She's got employees. She's supposed to be the general manager. she got employees there getting high at night, tricking off at night, letting prostitutes come in through the night. They do it down at Commonwealth, too. We got to stop pretending like we don't see wrong. And like I said in the rest of that video, I'm filming this for your protection as well as mine. See, I didn't show y'all the rest of the video when the cops came. And as you can see in the beginning of the video, I said, can we call corporate? Let's talk to your boss. They even tried to um, erase the reservation in the system. Saying me and my husband keep every ounce of everything that we do. So now, they on the ground. Extend the stay America is on the ground for their mistreatment. And for hiring inept staff. Like, these people are dirty. I bring my own cleaning supplies to every place I go. I suffer from severe PTSD, and nothing can be clean enough for me. They need to come and check my room out. Matter of fact, you should go back and ask the people at Extended Stay, actually ask Stan at the Extended Stay Farmers uh, Branch, who was the only professional person there. Stan is awesome, and he apologized to us when we were leaving, <clears throat> about the behavior of old Thickham, um, the Victoria, and, uh, you know, what was going on. Like, they all looking to cover their ass. People just trying to keep their jobs. The stimulus thing ain't happening. Everybody wants an easy gig. Everybody's, you know, just all over the place. It's like COVID is here, and now decency has gone, and, and cleanliness is a burden. It, it, cleanliness isn't a burden. And say cleanliness is next to godliness. So if you a dirty nigga, you ain't near, you ain't nowhere near God. You know that's why I bring my own cleaning supplies. People out here are disgusting. I keep black lights. I do it all. They should actually hire me to be an efficiency expert for hotels, as much as I know about hotel living and how it's supposed to look. And I can tell you right now, the COVID is serious. Y'all better make sure you keep your cleaning products with you if you out here traveling. Like I I'm I'm so G with it. I got like three different joints in here. I keep look, look at this. 
Just that, look, I, I'm I'm ready. I'm ready. I even wipe the bottle after I'm done just to make sure there ain't no extra germs. Like, I, that's how serious I am with it. You know, but we all got to be smart. <clears throat> and I consider it a public service announcement when I tell the people who I co- communicate with, y'all out here in the social world, when I tell y'all, hey, there's problems here, don't go here. Don't go here. Don't have the same experience I had. And if you go there, go there knowing that they fool around like that and make sure you get taken care of. We got to start learning how to get back to the village mentality. There used to be a time where we used to hip each other to good and bad things. Now everybody's so busy minding their business, they don't know how to tell nobody, hey, don't fall down that ditch. Hey, don't throw, your, don't throw good money after bad. Hey, you can do better than that. Aaliyah. As much as I desperately want to talk about Aaliyah, I cannot. I wish I could. I wish it were my story to tell. We all know what happened in the beginning. We just don't know why it ended the way it ended. And I know a lot of people, they got a whole lot of mixed emotions about Dane Dash. People say whatever they want to say about that man. That man loved that woman. I just want the world to know how much she was loved before she was taken away from everyone. I just want people to know that part. I'm sick and tired of the fact that her name will forever be attached to R. Kelly's name. Everything he did to her everything he did to that family. You know, I know a lot of people want to blame it all on Barry Hankerson and blame it on the family, but the truth is the music industry is a very confusing place, and sometimes things happen without people knowing. There are people that are actively working to keep people in the dark, actively working to constantly change stories, change reality, change everything, and they can do it all with a press release, just a press release. So I, I don't want to say anything that would um, frame her family in a negative light. I don't, because I don't think I can honestly say I believe they had no idea into the company. And I can tell you right now, it's easy to do in the music industry girl goes into the studio. She's supposed to be working in the studio. The first couple of sessions, the brother comes, the parents come. Everything seems fine, you know. Then it's, we're going to be working late. We really got to finish this song. He, somebody will drive y'all home. I promise she'll be home right after. And she do come home right after, but nobody asks what happened to her in the car or on the way home or what happened as soon as they left the studio. Like, you know what I mean? Like, people, y'all don't understand, like, the tactful nature, the tactical nature in which this sex trafficking and, 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 and this child abuse. Y'all don't understand. Like, these people go heavy, man. They go heavy. They'll have uh, the assistant sitting in the kitchen with the mom while they molesting the child in the bathroom, talking about, yeah, we're going over music, or, yeah, we're practicing a script, or, yeah, we need time alone with the child. Like, these niggas is that brazen. That they will rape your child while you in the house having expensive coffee and eating crumpets and shit. And your child bleeding out the ass and they're sitting there saying, don't say anything because your mother really needs this money. And if your mother don't get this money, y'all going to be out on the streets. You need to be a good boy or be a good girl. And don't say anything because your mom's going to go to the cops and if she does that, we're going to have her killed. The fuck is a nine-year-old child supposed to do with that kind of explosive information? Like... Like I said, it's not my story to tell, but it should be told by her brother or by Dane. Y'all need to know how amazing she really was. Y'all need to know what she really overcame. Y'all need to know the strength that came behind all of that sweetness and all of that grace. And She was tough. 
survived the stuff that she survived, she was tough. And nobody knows the real story. Yeah. Aaliyah's untimely demise changed a lot in my mind. I was angry at first. Why is she so stupid? Why would she get on that plane with all that luggage? Why she got to be so vain? The, the luggage could have came later. As much money as she had. But see, what nobody really got told about that story, and it's only been mentioned in a few documentaries, is that the reason why she was in such a rush to leave the island was because someone had called her and told her that Damon Dash was had been in a, in a nearly fatal accident and he was on his deathbed and she had to rush to Miami to be by his side. That's how much she loved him and she was willing to put her life on the line for it. See, if somebody called me and told me that my husband was about to die, I would do whatever I got to do to get there. And from what I was also told from other people that was on the shoot, packing all that luggage on the, the plane wasn't her idea either. She was told because the the, the the rap, you know, the video had wrapped that all of their belongings had to leave right then, that she couldn't leave them behind, that nothing, they had to take everything with them. Knowing that there was already almost a thousand pounds worth of human on that plane and then like 800 pounds of luggage. They said, well, if you got to go right now, you got to take all your stuff with you right now. And she was willing to risk it just to be with Dane. And I believe Dane, in the uh, interview that he had done, maybe five or six years ago, he said he never sent that phone call to summon her to Miami. He never had his assistant call her for any reason, and he wasn't even in Miami. Aaliyah got a phone call that the love of her life was about to die in Miami, and he wasn't even in Miami, and the call the call came from his assistant, which didn't exist either. And Fatima, the choreographer, heard that phone call because she mentioned it too in the interview, and she never mentioned it again. She got a phone call from a person that wasn't real about a situation that had never happened, being summoned to a place where her fiancé was not and forced to leave with all of her belongings if she left right there, which would put the plane in danger. I don't know but where I come from. That that sounds like a setup. Like the, the pilot was a crackhead, a former crackhead, and even he, the crackhead, didn't want to go along with it, but he was told that he had to because he was under contract. Somebody went through a lot of trouble to make sure that that girl got on that plane and that that plane... Like I said, it's not my story to tell. But I'll be damned. There's a lot of people that benefited from Aaliyah being gone. A lot of people made it that wouldn't have made it if Aaliyah was still around. And I'm not so big on the idea of conspiracy theories, but typically the way I see things is if you want to know who the masterminds are behind something, all you have to see is the person who benefits the greatest. That's the person that has the most motive to make sure people get moved around, the person that has the most to gain. In this business, that could be anybody. On the wrong day, it could be everybody. Ask Tory Lane about what it's like to be hated by everybody. People don't even know why. Not the real reasons why.
We got to get it right. We got to get it right for the Aliyahs of the world, for the Tammy Terrells of the world, for the Phyllis Heinz of the world, for the Tina Marie's of the world. We got to get it right for the Betty Wrights of the world. We got to get it right for the vanities of the world. We got to get it right. Even for the Apollonias of the world, we got to get it right. For the Cheryl Pepsi Riley's of the world, we got to get it right. For the Jaguar rights of the world, for the for the for the for the black lilies of the world, we gotta get it right. For all of the females who worked the bad boy, who worked for bad boy, who were artists, who were signed to bad boy, we gotta get it right, y'all. Can we get it right? For the Julie Garlands of the world, for the Janis Joplins of the world, for the Linda Creeds of the world, can we get it right for them? Can we get a right for the Aretha Franklin, who taught us what it was to be awesome and amazing and sat there and tolerated watching music fall down into nothing and only showing up to remind people that music is real, only to have your legacy lorded over by one of the greatest blights on humanity. And she still brought God to it. She was still able to bring God through all of that, Clyde Davis. Like, we got to get it right for the Tina Turners of the world. We got to get it right for the Michelle A's of the world. We got to get it right for the Yo-Yos of the world. We got to get it right for the Rod Diggers of the world. We got to get it right for the Darcells of the world. We got to get it right for the Kim Porters of the world. We got to get it right for the Naomi Campbells of the world. We got to get it right. I was talking with someone that's very close to me now, and we were talking about Samson and Delilah, the story of Samson and Delilah. People always remember Delilah as a whore, but nobody ever talked about her character or what she was like or where she came from, what her family was. And even after she helped take down um, Samson, Nobody ever talks about what happened to her, where she ended up, where she fell to. Like, how did she die? Did she have kids? Did she get married? Did she go into politics? All you know is that Delilah seduced Samson and that she brought Samson down and then the Philistines had Samson and then Samson made a big comeback, but you never hear about Delilah again. Now, this is a woman that was able to bring down a man that no other man could bring down. They sent her to him just to do that. But nobody ever talks about Delilah. You got to be a pretty ballsy chick to get involved with with, with a, a, um, a historic times Mike Tyson because let's just keep it a bean. Samson and Mike Tyson is the same person. I, I think that um, Mike Tyson is Samson reincarnated. You read it, you if you read the old stories of the Samson, Samson would get drunk, he would be, be in his feelings, grab a couple chicks. Somebody get out of here next to you know he's killing everybody. He just killing everybody. Nobody thought about what that looked like to the Philistines. This dude who comes to your town and he gets drunk and he runs with your chicks and then somebody say something next to you know he's killing everybody. Then he go home and he repent and he say, oh, my God, please forgive me. I don't know what happened. I was out of my head. I blacked out. You know what I mean? That was Samson. How many dudes do we know like that in this world for real, for real today? And then they sent this woman. They sent Delilah because she was the only person they could get close to him. Nobody has said no. Nobody said whether or not Delilah was in love with Samson or whether or not she. They didn't say she picked Samson. No, they said they sent her to him. See, see, they put a bitch on him. That's what they did. They put a bitch on them. And for all of the times that she tried, and she made it very clear, like, look, if you don't give me the information I need, these niggas are probably going to kill me. They counting on me. You got to tell me what it is. And he went back and forth, but it was so good. It was so good. He had to keep going back. And guess what? He ended up giving her the tape. And essentially all he did was turn himself over to the Philistines. I think he felt bad for her, maybe, in some kind of way. 
but she was able to do what no man in her in in her nation could do. And nobody could tell you what happened to Delilah. Like she put her life on the line. Who goes and willingly gets into a relationship with Mike Tyson? Other than Naomi Campbell. And by the way, Naomi Campbell is the only woman on the face of this planet that Mike Tyson was ever afraid of. Mike Tyson actually had a restraining order on Naomi Campbell. That's how bad Naomi Campbell is that she's scared Mike Tyson. See what I'm saying? Samson and Delilah. There's nothing new that happens under the sun. We keep doing the same stuff over and over and over again. What are we going to learn? When are we going to learn? Because after that relationship with Naomi Campbell, Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson's life changed quite a bit. Not even uh, the Desiree thing took him down. He went to jail. He did his time. He came back out, started knocking niggas out. But after Naomi Campbell, something changed, see? They sent Delilah to take down Samson. Delilah was a bad bitch, but she's only known as a whore. Delilah did the one thing that none of the men in her nation could do. Are there any temples or, or anything honoring her? Amongst her people. No, they sent the woman to go do the dirty work, and then she got the job done. They took all the credit, and that's that. You know, you don't hear nothing about Delilah. You don't know how she died. You don't know how she lived. You don't know anything about her. All you know is that she was the hoe that brought. Isn't that funny how she just became a hoe? Like, how did she become a hoe? She was your most trusted ally. She was y'all insurgent. Y'all sent her that dude to bring that dude down. And she did what you asked. And then you don't hear nothing else about the life. I mean, Naomi is. Naomi was over at Epstein Island. Everybody knows that. And guess what? She ain't saying shit. And if I was her, I wouldn't either. She got a golden ticket with the information that she got. And if I was her, I'd hold on to it as long as I can. They can't pay that woman enough money. The things that Naomi Campbell knows, don't nobody, ain't nobody ready for that. That's Delilah. The woman that can do what no other man could do. Naomi Campbell's a very powerful chick. And I don't give a shit what no um, Janice Dickinson say. Naomi Campbell is, is for real, for real the first supermodel. I don't care if you trumped yourself and you made yourself, um, you said you are the supermodel. You said a lot of things. You said um, Sylvester Stallone was your baby daddy and you was wrong about that shit too, bitch. Keep Bill Cosby's name out your mouth, ho. I, I promise if I ever see you, I'm going to smack the dog shit out of you. I'm going to smack the rest of that collagen and that Botox out of your face. Because you don't talk about Philly like that when you ain't nothing but a, a money-grubbing hoe. For years you ran around shitting on Sylvester Stallone's name, talking about he the father and he a deadbeat and he the father, and then the DNA test come back. And, and they, and, well, he's not the father. Oh, well, you know, I was getting high. Yeah, you were a fucking drug addict. So how did Bill Cosby drug you? How do you drug a drug addict? Only thing that man was guilty of, in my opinion, was sleeping with too many white women and cheating on his wife. If they all accepted payment, it was done business, and y'all all met him at the Playboy Mansion, and Hugh Hefner was never questioned, let alone charged, for facilitation. They let that nigga die in peace. And did he live right around the corner? Did he live around the corner? In the Sodomite City over there. Doing all kinds of things. Sticking hot peppers in everybody's ass. Boy, girl, it don't matter. They high enough to have sex with a lawn chair. I've seen that before at a Hollywood party. It's very disturbing. You know. We just, we got to do better. 
We got to start calling spades spades. We got to start standing up. Leor Cohen, as far as I know, square deal. Square deal. He Israeli. Israelis ain't no joke. Shoot. Israelis ain't no joke. They don't play no game. He was all business all the time, and he was smart business all the time, and he was fair business all the time. Leo Cohen never did nothing wrong by me. Shit, I wish he had been my manager. But we just, we got to do better. You know, that's why we put together the WCW meetings on Wednesday. Because people don't believe that black women, Where's D'Angelo? I don't know. Michael, I don't know. Probably in Virginia somewhere. I couldn't tell you. It would be nice. I pray for Cassie every day. Cassie don't know it. I never paid any attention to Cassie. I never took Cassie serious. She was a model pretending to be an artist because Diddy told her to. And then... When she couldn't live up to what people wanted her to, he abandoned her and he left her for dead and blamed her for her own demise when he was the one that strung that whole thing together. I'm so glad she um, found love. I hope that motherhood just washes over her. And um, I pray that she won't stay silent either. I pray that Cassie will come out and talk about the things that she knows that she's seen. Because the truth is, Cassie probably saw more than Kim did. Cassie probably saw it all. Because Cassie went from in the shadows to the pitch hitter to the bench warmer to being on deck to the starting lineup. You know, and then he traded her to a triple-A team. He didn't even trade her to the MLB. Traded her to a triple-A team. I've said it on a few occasions. I do not discuss my business with Mr. Sean Carter out of respect for Mr. Carter and Mrs. Carter. Sean Carter and I have unfinished business, and I would like to finish it respectfully for the posterity of music and music history. Cassie got to tell it. Cassie got to tell it. She got to let go of that because I know the weight that I felt from everything that I was crushed underneath. I know it's on her too. Just like I hope that, you know, Talib's victim Maya will reach out to me. Just like I am asking everyone to support the woman who, who should have been his wife, who was his wife in every way, shape, or form, Muti Darcel, hashtag Muti Darcel, because she went from just being a wonderful mother to her children to being a mother to everyone that comes into her wake. You can see it in her eyes, you know, just the love of God pouring out of her. And it's like, what kind of man, what kind of man messes over a woman that fine? A woman that decent, a woman that amazing, like watching her with Storm, I was blown away. Like, not only were you dope back in the day, but you got dopa. She is dopamine, like all day. You, you're just addicted to that. And he, he walked away from all of that. He let that go. She's getting beautiful children. His daughter sent me a message on my inbox. And my mother, and my mother, I didn't tell your mother to do that interview with Storm. The only thing that I did do was apologize to your mother. And your father needs to apologize to all of y'all. And your mother's a hero, and I hope you support her. And that's what I had to say to his daughter. She's a hero. That woman is going to save so many women. Uh, which is why I, I affectionately titled her Muti Darcel. Because Muti means mother of mothers. And that's what she's doing. She's given all of that love she was deprived. Man. 
And an idiot got on my page and started trying to argue with everybody that they were abusing his black woman daughter. Well, you was abusing that black girl mine on Twitter. That's why they threw your monkey ass off. And you should have acknowledged ourselves. That cell made you everything that you are. That's why I kept bringing up her name. You men sit there and you feed off of this strong female energy. All of that talent. So I tell her want to mess with the game. I don't blame her. So she put it all into you. She doubled down for the sake of you and for her children. For the sake of her family. For the legacy of it all. And then you, you play games with her. And the truth is, she was a better artist. Man, those were the days. All those brilliant females supporting all of those men. It's a shame that love wasn't returned. Why do hip hop gotta be so hard on us, women? Why can't y'all just love us back the way we love y'all? Why can't y'all just give us back what we give y'all? Reciprocity is not the enemy of success in life or love or money. Reciprocity is the key to success for life, for love, for money. It's the key. Y'all better go out and buy that woman's book, all them books. As soon as we leave the dog park here, I think King is going to go for his first swim today. He looked like he got it. and um, I got to get ready to go film, so I got to leave y'all alone. But y'all better go out and support the energy that made Talib Kweli, or at least help shape Talib Kweli into becoming the artist that y'all fell in love with. That was Darcel's energy. Running through him. Like she said, for two decades, she held him down, and all she got in return was disrespect and neglect, which is why I had to come out and apologize to her, because to acknowledge Talib Kweli and to not acknowledge Dar so is blasphemy. Period. So big up to her for speaking her truth. And I can't wait for us to meet as women. I want to meet Darcel now. I don't want to duck and hide from her anymore. I want to meet her. I want to shake her hand. I want to say thank you for your contribution. I'm actually hoping that um, I can persuade her into joining my uh, my women's group on Wednesdays. You know, we just broke off into divisions, and after watching her interview, I can't imagine a stronger presence of love and affect and effect and, and, and growth. I can't imagine a better representative as an elder than than Darcel at this point for the East Coast. I can't. I mean, she just. I don't know about y'all, but watching that interview with Storm and the way Storm and her communicated, and it's like it was so dope to watch. I'm like, oh, this is what people get when they watch me and Storm, you know. <laughs> and Storm is just—he's such a pro, you know. He's such a pro, and and. And there's all of that care, and now all of these survivors are coming. They're coming out, and they're, they're, they're wanting to talk now. And it's not just because of me anymore. It's because of Darcel. There's, there's a lot of healing that's about to happen, and I hope y'all are around and present for it. But, yeah, let's stop being punks, and let's start calling spades spades. Let's stop pretending that we don't see things that we actually do. It doesn't make you crazy that you see the truth. It just means you still recognize it. It means you're not lost. So don't be lost. Don't act lost. I'm going to go film my dog, my baby, my fur baby, as they call it. Because he sure don't act like a dog. He swear to God, a human. He untied his leash from around the table this morning and went into the bathroom and went to the bathroom like we do. Like, he swears to God, he's a human, like a whole human. I can't wait to see what his litter's going to look like next year. Yeah. Don't be lost. 
Don't act flawed. If you see the truth and you know it, share it. There's somebody out there that needs it. Y'all better go out and buy every last thing that that woman. I want one of them Darcel T-shirts now. Like, she had the T-shirt. I'm like, that's what I'm talking about. Brand it up, mama. Brand it up. And as black women, we need to buy everything she does. So we're going to Barnes & Noble after we leave here. And I'm going to look me, uh, look for me some, uh, some Darcel writing because I need that. Greetings to Amsterdam. Oh, God. The Paradiso, so many amazing memories. I can't wait for the country to open back up so I can get there. Is Oprah a house arrest? I don't know. She might need to be. Some of the things I've heard. <laughs> um, if if he gets in, if King gets in and swims, I'm definitely posting. I'm definitely posting. All right, so let me go. I don't know what's going on with D'Angelo, but you know what I say? I say y'all should start hitting up his fan pages and stuff like that and start asking for him. You know, sometimes artists, when they've been away for a while, they don't think y'all care anymore. They don't think you're interested anymore. You know, so, like, be proactive. Like, hit D up. Hit up Michael Archer and say, yo, D'Angelo, we need another album. You have no idea. On some days, when you feel forgotten as an artist, it's those messages that make people want to get back in the studio again. So, yeah, don't ask me where he is. Ask him where he is. Matter of fact, I ain't going to ask him. I'm going to ask him for y'all. Nigga, they looking for you. You got some music. <laughs> where the music at, D? Let's get back to that. All right, y'all. I might I might just pop in. We might pop in. We might have some interesting dinner plans that we want to share with y'all. So, all right, well, I'll see y'all later. And um, extend the stay. You got some explaining to do. How you treating black people and the kind of black people you hiring. Because them niggas, they add up in there. I do not want them representing my kind. I don't want them representing us. Not at all. No, well, they need to be moved around. Somebody need to send them to PC or send them to the hole. Okay, so I'll see y'all later. God bless you. Thank you for supporting my friend Storm, and thank you for supporting Darcel. Y'all might not want to believe me, but you really ain't got no choice but to believe her. And God bless you, Mooty Darcel. God bless you. And there are women here got your back all the way. And we love your children, and especially your daughter, who has every right to be upset with this. But, honey, don't be so upset that you forget to support your mom. Because she needs you now more than ever. Because everything that she sacrificed and everything that she swallowed and every time she bit her tongue, she did it for you. So you would never have to know that your father wasn't the man that she told you he was. The man that she probably hoped he would be. She did all of that for y'all. Support her now. Support her. She's a star. She's just as big a star as your father is. Matter of fact, bigger. I bet it. I bet you she put an album out. It'll smash anything that he's done in the past five years. I saw it in her eyes. I don't think she got it in her. I don't know. Maybe we need to start demanding an album from Don Seller or EP. I'm getting demanded. I want me some good entertainment. We have been surprised. Is P. Diddy gay? Yeah. He gay? He running around making men suck him off and running around with dildos in his hotel rooms and ain't no women around? Yeah, he gay. He old sodomite. Forcing men to do things. What about Brandy? We're going to have to talk about that later. I got to go. Y'all keep asking me questions. I'm going to miss everything at the dog park. <laughs> All right, y'all. Love you. Stay up. And keep it a 